Hi guys, it's ASBYT and this is the much hyped OnePlus 7T Pro. A bit of a mouthful, but the question is, is it really worth the upgrade from the OnePlus 7 Pro? And how much is it actually better than the standard OnePlus 7T, which was launched just a couple of weeks ago? I've been using it on and off now for the last week. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what happened in the quick unboxing. Then I'm gonna give you a full review of how I've got on with it within the time I've been using it. So it's time to grab your Plus One and the pair of you can watch what's new with the OnePlus 7T Pro. Y'all see me fly and never drop down, drop down, smoking high, am I am not round, I'm not round, no denying what I got now, I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down, see me Firstly, apologise for that absolutely horrific pun at the start. I can assure you the product is better than my awful jokes. Now, firstly, in case you are new to the OnePlus brand and their products as a whole, you'll need to know that the T variants are devices that come out towards the back end of the year. They're based very heavily on devices that came out around May, June time, with a few alterations, enhancements and improvements to hopefully take it just that little bit further. Not wholesale changes, incremental, no doubt, but remember that thought as we go through this video. Right, so in terms of the unboxing experience, when we slide off the outside sleeve, inside it actually opens outwards and it's actually rather satisfying to do. Inside, firstly, we have a little reviewer's booklet with information about the new device. We're just gonna put that to one side. And then we have the two different sections. On the left-hand side, the actual device inside the retail box. And then on the right-hand side, we have some cases. Now, traditionally, we have sandstone, carbon fiber, and a silicon red as well. For some reason in this one I've got two carbon fibers, not really sure why. Perhaps they'd slipped an extra carbon fiber one in by mistake. Jump down in the comments if you would like the cases in this video and uh, I'll send them to one person from the comments again. Now we jump to the retail box and the retail box looks pretty much identical again to the standard 7T. We've got a little message from OnePlus on the front and the OnePlus 7T text also on the sides. And then if we flip to the back, we have a little bit of information of this actual device. So not only does it give us the color, which is haze blue, but also it tells us eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And I've been told that that is the only option available to keep things simple. There may be other colors available, but in terms of RAM and storage, it only comes in one variant. And again, same as the 7T, when I pulled the open tab, it didn't really work how I believe OnePlus intended, but again, I thought I'd let them off if the device was good enough. Inside the box, you of course have your manuals, and then we have the actual device, and you'll get a quick glimpse here of the haze blue in all its action. And as soon as we take that extra packaging off, it starts to really shine through, and I'm a massive fan of this haze blue. I quite like the nebula blue of the OnePlus 7 Pro that was released a few months ago, but I found, especially when shooting video with it, it was a little bit dark. This haze blue really catches the light and it's gonna be a head turner. It's slightly darker than the standard blue coloring on the OnePlus 7T, which is more of kind of like an ice blue, like a fox's glacier mint. Are they still around? I hope so, they were good. <laughs> now outside of the color, you'll probably notice not much different from the OnePlus 7 Pro. You've still got the same button configurations with the same alert slider, which I love and will continue to love on all OnePlus devices. I'm not really sure why other manufacturers don't do it. Also inside the box, we have the charger and the charging cable. Here we have Warp Charge 30T, which OnePlus claim is about 23% faster than the last generation. And this week, that early part of the charge has been absolutely phenomenal in the time I've been using it. From sort of naught to 60%, it's been ridiculously quick. Then it tends to slow down, and if you've got your phone at 75%, 80, 90, whatever, and you put it on charge, it takes quite a long time to get to 100%. But OnePlus have really focused on that early part of the charge, because they, and to be honest, I feel that that is quite an important part of the charge. If I'm dashing out the door, dash charge, OnePlus fans from old will know. I was dashing out the door the other day and I was on like 10% and I was just like, oh, what am I gonna do? Put it on charge. It was about five to 10 minutes, maybe a little bit more, but there or thereabouts. And next time I looked, it was about 40% and therefore gave me enough juice to last the time that I was out. Certainly don't need to charge overnight and uh, it's been really helpful. Now those slight increased charging speeds have been combined with a slightly increased battery cell as well. So we've got 4,085 mAh in the 70 Pro. Now, 
I'm a little bit disappointed about that. I was hoping for a bit of a bigger battery cell because I do find on the OnePlus 7 Pro, battery life is good, but it's not amazing, especially when you've got the Quad HD resolution going on and the 90 Hertz refresh rate as well, which we'll get to. I found it left me wanting a little bit with the 7 Pro. It has been better with the 7T Pro, but it's very marginal. So we touched on the 90 Hertz refresh rate of the 7 Pro, and we have that, like I said, again here. No improvement, no 120 Hertz, no 4K resolution on the display, but all in all, it is a pretty great display. My only disappointment with the display is not based on its comparison to the 7 Pro, it's actually based on its comparison to the 7T standard, because yes, we've got a Quad HD Plus 6.67 inch display compared to the 6.55 inch Full HD Plus display, but we actually have newer technology in the 7T than the 7T Pro, which seems a bit odd, and I'll explain. We've got an E3 panel material display, which emits 40% less blue light. It's got a peak brightness of around 1,000 nits. And overall, like I said, it's just a newer technology than we see in the 7T Pro, which is also still Gorilla Glass 5 and not 6, like the standard majority of flagships around right now. We do still have HDR10+. The display is also AMOLED, known as Fluid AMOLED, according to OnePlus. It is still incredibly immersive with those wraparound curved edge displays, which when you combine that with Quad HD, you combine that with the 90 Hz refresh rate, it is a brilliant display. And earlier in the year, I felt the higher refresh rate trend creeping up on us, and I thought it was better, but didn't think it needed quite as much attention as people were giving it. When I now go from a 90 or a 120 back to a 60, I really do notice the difference. And then when you go back, it's like, hmm, bam. <laughs> it is still slightly too wide, in my personal opinion, for what a smartphone should be, but there's no denying it's a beautiful premium looking device. Great for media consumption, great for gaming. I've had hours of fun when I really should have been working and the haptic feedback motor has been improved as well. It seems quieter, cleaner, and just a, a little bit more satisfying. OnePlus have always prided themselves on the smoothness of performance, and I've noticed that in the last week, the eight gigabytes of RAM, the Snapdragon 855 Plus SoC, you combine that with the latest Android 10 with Oxygen OS over the top, OnePlus's skin. It really has been a pleasure to use. I personally love Oxygen OS. I think it's my, per I actually prefer Oxygen OS to stock Android and people out there might be like, whoa, settle down, buddy. Oxygen OS, what stock Android should be. Sorry, Google, no hate intended. Very, very close to stock Android, but just a few little quirky features that just makes it feel that little bit smoother. The included animation, special gestures, unlocking the device and little quirky features like Zen mode, for example, all equate to an experience that is really, really stellar. I personally don't use Zen mode, although, like I said on the 70 video, I really should. I need to put my phone down more and open my eyes and lift my head up every now and again. And I will do once Techtober and the birth of my second child are out the way. But the other features that I've mentioned, I use and abuse all the time. Now we said that the camera arrangement on the back looked almost identical to the OnePlus 7 Pro from earlier in the year, and the actual lenses are basically the same. So we've got a primary 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor with f1.6 aperture and OIS. We've got a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with an 117 degree field of view. And we've got an eight megapixel telephoto lens with three times optical zoom, f2.4 aperture and OIS. So that when you're zooming in two shots that are quite far away, you can still be relatively stable. You're probably also sat there saying, well, hang on, isn't that almost identical to the OnePlus 7T camera setup as well? And again, you'd be correct. We've got the same primary lens pretty much. We've got the same ultra wide angle lens pretty much. The only difference is the telephoto zoom. Telephoto zoom? The telephoto lens with optical zoom is what I was looking for. We've got a 12 megapixel lens on here compared to the eight on here, but we have also the 
OIS on here as well. Obviously in terms of design, they're hugely different. Let me know which one you prefer. So there have been some changes software wise with the 70 Pro with that camera. So you now have more portrait options. So you can choose between kind of the traditional standard head and shoulder shot, or you can zoom out a little bit and still get that nice blurred bokeh background. You've also got the all new macro mode as well, where you can shoot from 2.5 centimeters away and you can capture some really great shots. Don't get me wrong, they look amazing when you get them. I, I personally don't feel that's necessarily massively important. Not saying it's a gimmick, but I can't say I've felt the need to use that in my life. You may differ, you may love getting those really close animal or insect or flower shots in that macro mode. It may be beneficial. It's a good feature, it's just not one that I've really used that much. Also, the brand new Nightscape has a really great feature where you can shoot using that wide angle lens as well. So it's absolutely great if you're out shooting in city centers, for example, and you want big buildings in there and stuff like that. It looks brilliant. The shots are also now producing a wider dynamic range to create brighter, clearer, crisper looking night shots. And while I don't think it's necessarily quite as good still as the offerings from Huawei, for example, it's certainly now incredibly competitive. And in terms of the photo quality, you can get some absolutely great shots, really crisp, clear, fairly warm color temperatures compared to Samsung and Huawei, for example, still cooler than the iPhone. But I feel with OnePlus and cameras, they are getting better. I still don't feel it would be my number one pick in a camera but it's getting pretty close. And if you install the Google Camera APK on there, for example, getting the kind of camera app from the Google Pixel phones, again, that software processing combined with the hardware of the device is another really great feature and an alternative. But if you just wanna use the standard app that comes with the OnePlus 7T Pro for the average general consumer, it's a great camera. In terms of video, it doesn't quite meet the likes of the iPhone 11 Pro, for example, which can shoot 4K at 60 on the rear and the front, and the audio is great. The audio is not quite as good on here. You don't get 4K on the front camera, but you do get 4K 60 on the rear, again, the same as the 7 Pro. And all in all, with their new stabilization system where they fuse OAS and EIS together, they call it hybrid, it does make footage look pretty smooth. So not the best video, but again, pretty competitive. And along those lines, if we look at the front facing camera, I'm not a personal per a personal person. I'm not personally a person who takes a massive amount of selfies, but when I do, you can get some pretty decent shots. Again, not quite as sharp as the Pixel phones and, and even the iPhones, to be honest, in terms of that pure facial focus sharpness. But I do like the color temperature in the processing and the edge detection on the whole is pretty decent as well around the hair areas and sort of edges of shoulders and chairs and stuff like that. As always with these things, it's not perfect, but again, it's a solid eight out of 10. Now, unfortunately, you can't get the sort of two focal lengths like you can on the rear. That would be a nice addition for a future product. And of course, that 60 megapixel front camera is housed inside the pop-up. So that is something that may be make or break for you. It debuted for OnePlus in the OnePlus 7 Pro, and they've continued it with the OnePlus Pros. OnePlus 7 Pro. I told you it was a mouthful. So in terms of the OnePlus 7T Pro as a standout device, it's a really, really great one, especially considering even though it's more expensive than the 7T, it will come in at cheaper than the latest and greatest from Samsung and Apple, etc. You're getting a brilliant device for the money. But here's where I'm a little bit confused with this device. If you take away the fact that it has the Snapdragon 855 Plus compared to the 855 in the OnePlus 7 Pro, and all in all, in my opinion, there's not a huge noticeable difference in performance. If you take away some of the software tweaks like macro mode in photography, some of the new additions with Android 10, which is already on the 7T and will be coming to the likes of the 7 Pro. If you take away the minor improvement to the battery size, you've basically got the same phone as the 7 Pro. And I know the T variant is incremental, but the similarities between these two combined with, in my opinion, the huge improvement in the standard 7T just completely blurs the line now between the three devices. It felt that OnePlus with the 7 range put all their focus on the 7 Pro and forgot the 7. And now with the T variant, They've gone all out to now improve the 7 to the 7T and kind of forgot to improve the 7 Pro. Don't get me wrong, three incredible products, great prices across the board, just 
a little bit of a head scratcher, a little bit confusing on this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Has this now blurred the lines, not like Robin Thicke? Blurred lines. <laughs> Sorry. Don't copyright strike me, Robin Thicke. What do you think of the 7T Pro? Are you interested in it? Are you gonna go and get it? Have you already got the 7 Pro? Are you not gonna upgrade? Are you gonna go and get the 7T because it's cheaper and you get very similar features? And as always, these videos do tend to take quite a long time to make. So if you did enjoy it and found it helpful, if you can drop a like below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Breaking tech news, unboxings, reviews. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for your TP Peace out. Denying what I got now, I got now Keep an eye out, keep it locked